In this video, I'll be creating a poster in Corel Draw. The only rule for poster design is that there are no rules. You're free to use whatever size you like, with all of Corel Draw's design tools at your disposal. This relatively simple poster will be for a bluegrass festival, and the techniques I'll be using can help you get started on your own poster design. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. I'll start a new file in Corel Draw, and I'll use the broadsheet preset dimensions with portrait orientation, though I could enter custom dimensions as well. I'll keep the default RGB preset and 300 dpi resolution. For the poster background, I've downloaded a wooden bitmap pattern I'd like to use. First, I'll double click the rectangle tool to add a page frame. I'll click the interactive fill tool, and in the interactive property bar, I'll choose the bitmap pattern fill option. My most recently used pattern is applied by default, so I'll click the edit fill icon, and I'll click choose next to source. Here's the image I want to use, so I'll import it, then stretch the handles and position the pattern. The texture is a bit strong for a background, so with the frame still selected, I'll switch to the transparency tool. I want uniform transparency at about 70%. I also want a color added to the background, so I'll double click the rectangle tool again to add another frame, and left click a light blue swatch to set the frame fill. I'm going to make this color a gradient fill, but I'll do that later after the other poster elements have been added. I have some clip art to add to the poster. But first, I want to define a power clip so that all clip art will be clipped to the poster borders. I'll right click on the current frame and choose Frame Type Create Empty Power Clip Frame. Now I'll import my clip art. I'll click the Import icon, choose these three PNG images of bluegrass instruments, and bring in each one by one. With the Pick tool, I'll move the mandolin inside the frame, and by default, it's added to the power clip. For the other two instruments, I need to press W to add them to the power clip as well. To place the instruments, I'll double click the power clip to edit it. I'll rotate two of the instruments 295 degrees, the other by 115. Now I'll resize each instrument and move it into place, and click Finish to bring back the clipping. In the object stalker, the three instruments are now inside the power clip. Now for some text. I'll click the text tool, keep the default font for now, and type the festival name. I'll center justify, and now I'll select the text so that I can try out some different fonts. The one I'll go with is Decovar Alpha, which happens to be a variable font, and I'll increase the font size to 150. Because this is a variable font, I can open the list of variable font properties and adjust the various properties to get the look I want. To make the text fit within the page, I'll reduce the font size to 120. With the text still selected, I'll click a blue swatch and use the Envelope tool to curve the bottom of the letters. Finally, I'll add a shadow, dragging from the center of the text to create a flat shadow with high opacity and low feathering. A fun way to spice up a poster is to add non-destructive lens effects. In the Objects Docker, I'll shift select the three instruments and choose Effects, Creative, Art Style. I can get a preview for the Post Impressionist effect, or Lava Lamp for a more psychedelic look, and I'll settle on Woodcut with medium detail and medium intensity. Each of these objects now has an FX marker in the Objects Docker, which I can click to toggle the effects on and off. If I want to change the effect, I can keep the object selected, open the Properties Docker, and in the FX tab, I can edit the art style. Now I want to add some text in the lower right corner to list the festival details. I have these already saved in a text file, so I'll click Import, find the file, and bring it in without any fonts or formatting. The text comes in as paragraph text, but I have more editing flexibility with artistic text. So I'll right-click the text and convert it to Artistic, move it into the poster, write Justify, change the font to Bellway Bold, and set the font size to 72. 
For the font color, I want to match a lighter shade from the mandolin. So I'll click the Color Eyedropper tool and click to add this color to the document palette. The text is still selected, so I'll click this new color to apply it to the text. I want the Presented By line to look different than the rest of the text. So, with the text still selected, I'll press Ctrl K, which breaks up the text object into separate objects for each line of text. Now I can select the last line change its font to Calibri and black, make it a bit smaller, and center it using Object, Align and Distribute, Center to Page horizontally. For the other five lines, I'll shift select them all and apply a flat shadow, adjusting the shadow offset values just a bit. The last element to add is the production company logo, which I have saved as a PNG file. I'll import it, and place it in this empty spot. As I mentioned near the beginning, I want to add a gradient to the light blue fill of the frame. I'll select the correct rectangle in the object stalker, activate interactive fill, and choose fountain fill with an elliptical shape. To bring the eye toward the instruments, I'll keep white at the center of the ellipse and adjust handles to get the gradient that I want. I like everything except for that last line of text at the bottom. So I'll double click to edit it, select the entire line, and the little triangle at the center means that I have stylistic set options. I'll choose small caps and recenter the text. And with that, my poster is done, ready to be printed and framed. This was just a basic example of how to create the basic elements, background, graphic objects, and text. But this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's no limit to the creative touches you can bring to your own posters. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on poster design in CorelDRAW. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial to try out the steps yourself.